Okay, let's bring out our first finalist. The first finalist is Lift Igniter, and presenting is co-founder Adam Spector. Hi there, I'm Adam, the co-founder of Lift Igniter. We're a machine learning personalization platform for every single website and app that cares about serving its users. What does it mean to serve your users? Well, it means you give them the items they love, the items they want to buy, and the items they want to share. It's been proven pretty definitively that if you give them the items they want and you can target them at the moment they most care about it, you'll succeed in your goal. The challenge, however, is that millions of dollars are spent every single year to get the right information in front of the right people. Almost all of this is wasted. The reason? Everyone is overwhelmed, marketers, product managers, absolutely overwhelmed with data. On top of it, there are, every single person is massively diverse, not only from, of course, each other, but in fact, also from ourselves. If I do my job right, by the end of this presentation, every single one of you will be different than before I started. Now, in the past, personalization has really meant looking at historical data, um, likes that people have, different other things around like cohorts and segments and A-B testing. The problem is none of that really targets you at this very moment in time. At Lift Igniter, we look at all the information about all users on the site combined with all content in kind of a dynamically changing soup of information with you at the center. After earning his PhD, my co-founder joined Google's machine learning research group. They figured out how to personalize in real time for every single user, even brand new cold start users, and it was so successful to the tune of billions of dollars in incremental new revenue a year. Inspired by the success there, at Lift Igniter, we built a platform for every single vertical, across all types of content, across every single touch point, and across all devices. Now, let's go to the demo. So Listia is one of our customers, and their CEO came to us and said, we have a huge amount of user-generated content that we want to target to each user. We said, hey, why don't you come try the Lift Igniter platform, and we can see what we can do for you. So I told, told G, their CEO, do you want to start personalizing emails? Do you want to work on search? Do you want to personalize app? Or do you want to personalize on-site? We started with on-site, and we typed in their URL, and we're able to start collecting data pretty much right away. We then can choose various parts of the site that we want to personalize. In this case, we started with recommendation area on the right-hand side with them. Then as a business, they have different goals that they want to optimize for. We could optimize for engagement, conversion, in this case, we focus on click-through rate to start with for their trial. And then there's like a business rule that you can add in. Let's say in this case, optimize for iPhones. Then you go to the next step, click get started. And just like that, we're personalizing for, Li for Listia on their site in real time. So fast forward 30 days to the end of the trial, and these are actual results that we got them. We had a 241% improvement in click-through rate a 150% improvement in engagement, in this case those were bids for them, and a 102% improvement in actual on-revenue new conversion. So let's go back to the presentation. So here's one of our media customers. We got them a 228% improvement in clicks and a 327% improvement in engagement. And all of these trials that we do are A-B tested at every single moment in time. We've never lost an A-B test once. On top of that, we don't know of any machine learning, personalization, or recommendation provider that has results that are remotely close to these. Finally, it took minutes to integrate, not months. The way we do it is we take the best machine learning in AI in the world, and we have a fantastic team behind it building it, merge that and marry it with fantastically fast infrastructure where every time that a user takes an action, there's a, it's processed by our algorithms, it's returned to the site, all in a 125 millisecond round trip. That means for every single action that a user takes, there's an intelligent real-time reaction immediately. What this enables us to do is that we hit every single impression directly on the head every single time, and we treat that impression as a cohort of one at that moment. We scan over 300 million items a day. We have 350 billion signals that we're gathering a month. We have fantastic customers in the media space, the enterprise B2B space, the e-commerce space, and over 50 that we haven't even listed here today.
We're a SaaS-based company, and our pricing is usage-based, which, mean, which means that we're very, it's very easy for our customers to add new items and new parts of the site that they want to start personalizing. We've grown 20% month over month. We're profitable today, and we have over six figures in revenue, um, monthly recurring revenue. And we have spent almost no money on uh, sales and marketing. Wrap it up. So we're launching today the Lift United platform. You integrate it once, and you personalize everything, every touch point, every type of content, and every device. Thank you so much. Look at that lightning fast finish. <laughs> All right, judges, who wants to start us off? I will. All right, go ahead, Francesca. Yeah, so great pitch. Well done. Thank you. Um, I've seen a few companies in this space uh, personalizing websites. Yep. One of the areas that you can differentiate yourselves is around proprietary data. Mm -hmm. Can you start to build that in your models uh, yep. to close the door behind you? Yeah, no, absolutely. So, I mean, it, you know, in a sense, everyone gets similar data, but w the way you use that data and what you're doing with it is really what's proprietary. And so we're taking all the data across all the sites, and it's siloed the data we look at for each customer, but we can also build network effects across all of that as well. And then being able to use that in full real time is a real proprietary difference to make that intelligent decision at that moment. Isn't it the person that then has the most data, though, that can do this the best? Well, it will it long term, potentially. At the moment, though, we've, we're getting over 80% improvements on average for all of our customers just with their own siloed data on their own site. And that's beating everybody else in A-B tests. Okay. John. Who's the best customer? It seems like the media, you know, any content-heavy website, you know, uh, is going to do pretty well with this kind of improvement. But, you know, uh, is, this, uh, is this really targeted uh, for, you know, say my wife has a, has a, a blog that she writes, mm -hmm. uh, knickertwist.com. How much would it cost her a month to use your, your, your service or, you know, and, and would it pu plug into WordPress or how does, this, how does this actually get implemented? Absolutely. At the moment, it would probably be too expensive for, for your wife's blog. Um, but at the same time, I think long term, it gets to a point where it becomes very low cost to add it to every single site. And we can personalize even the smallest sites. It's just from an expense perspective, it doesn't quite make sense. And for us as a business, how much, how much does it cost? So we started about $1,000 a month and then go up from there. Um, our average value is a lot higher than that, but it goes from there. Um, and then the other thing to add to your other point about different customers. So obviously content heavy is great for us. However, we define content in a very broad sense, right? So it's articles, videos, items to buy, images, music. We don't really care. The main goal is to merge a specific user impression with that piece of content it can be on media site, e-commerce, enterprise B2B, we don't care. A lot of the customers that you will want to have on board, a lot of the larger customers will likely already be using a, an optimize, uh, a website optimizing platform, right? So when you go and talk to those customers, how do you position yourself? How do you pitch? What's your unique angle? Yep, absolutely. I mean, usually we first start off saying, are you happy with what you're currently doing? And in many cases, they found they haven't been. Um, second of all, we say, look, it's extremely easy to test it out. Mm. Unlike almost everybody else we know of in the yeah. market, they say, oh, it's going to take six months to integrate, do all this extra work, lots of extra tagging. You add a few lines of JavaScript code, and you're able to start integrating with Lyft Igniter and start testing it out. And we say, do an A-B test. We will prove to you, we'll guarantee, and we'll actually put this in our contracts, a minimum of a 20% improvement. And we usually, as I said, we average over 80% as well. So I run a media site. Yep. Um, and we want to start working with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, one of the biggest issues that we found with A-B testing or uh, optimization is lack of canonical tagging. Yep. So no matter how much you tell a writer, hey, you know, add the tags, make sure the tags are appropriate to the story, they're already thinking about the next story, they're working on mm -hmm. stuff, and they, they fail to tag. This is, are you complaining um, about this again? I, I, um, <laughs> <laughs> I complain about this a lot. Um, but... If that's the case, you mentioned that you know, the, the long-term deployment of some other options out there. I, I'm uh, interested to hear more about exactly what signals you're reading, how you're ingesting those mm -hmm. choices made by the, the reader, uh, and whether or not those readers need to be logged in. Um, so kind of the front, the back end, you know, how do you avoid having to rely on tagging? Yep. And then the front end, how do you avoid having to have somebody logged in to uh, personalize the website for them? Absolutely. So John, who wrote our article yesterday about us, will probably love this because we talked a lot about tagging and how we actually don't require any tags at all. John does tag his article. So I know he does, and he's yeah. very good at it, but yeah. he says, you know, gets frustrated sometimes, so if you don't <laughs> mind, John. Um, but but he, we talked about how we don't require any tagging at all because tagging is, of course, completely messy. It's usually very arbitrary. 
in very different requirements that each, each writer tags things in a different way. Um, so what we look at, we look at and said all the user signals around how they're interacting with the site and how they're flowing from article A to article B to article X. Right, so we're looking at all those signals, which makes us, we, so we're also language agnostic as well. We have customers globally in languages people on our team don't even speak. Um, the tags don't really matter. Instead, what's a universal truth is that users digitally act in different ways on different sites, but it doesn't matter what language they're in, what country they're in at all. And we learn from those user interactions with the content. We don't care if they're logged in to go to that question. We don't care if they're logged in. They can be brand new cold start the moment they arrive, we've gathered about 100 signals about them, and we can personalize based on those signals because we can use machine learning. It's a very sparse data set, but we're able to start still building out a model for you the moment you arrive, but before that page is done loading, results have already been returned to the site that are fully personalized for that user, even if they're brand new cold start. And is that carried over via cookies, via networks of other sites that you see them coming from, or? No, so it's just based on them being on that site at that moment. It's those sparse 100 signals that we'll start with. We'll start building that profile. You build that out from like IP address or something, like where they're located and then outwards in a Where they're located, where they there. came from, um, what browser they're using, all of those sorts of things that you're able to start building, hey, this is what this person's really interested in right now. And of course, people change really quickly, right? Which is why you need to be able to react in real time. Just like we're all chatting right now, I'm reacting to the questions you have and looking at your feedback and things like that and giving you those answers. We essentially enable websites and apps to take that same dynamic approach to giving your users what they want. You say it takes minutes to integrate. Uh, you know, okay, so I know how you, know, you can easily add Google Analytics to anything with just a little JavaScript thing. Yep. What, what makes it so easy to integrate uh, and does it you know, and how do you substitute the content if it's so easy to integrate? Don't you have to work with some other backends to make sure the content is being pulled up in the right order? How, how does that work? Yeah, absolutely. So Google Analytics is a great example. We literally have a JavaScript beacon. It's asynchronous, very, pretty much the same as a Google Analytics beacon. That's the installation process. We then scan the entire site, get all the data, which also makes us agnostic to the CMS that you're using, all of your backend systems. So we scan the data, we then collect it, and then we return back via API. Depends how the customer wants to integrate, but it returns back via API in most cases the results, which is essentially a JSON array of items that we're going to, that in rank order of the ones we think you're most likely to click on or to buy or whatever else. Okay, so you index all the possible options of the content that people could possibly retrieve from that site. Correct. And you indicate, okay, here's an article from four years ago that this person is more likely to click on, you know, for example? So, yep, we'll look, at, we'll look at all those things. And obviously their site is changing, right? All the users are constantly changing how they're interacting with the site. The content is always being new stuff is being added, right? TechCrunch is adding new articles constantly about things. We're learning all those interactions and we're scanning every new item as it comes up and as ones are taken off as well. In your, in your demo, you showed, you, we've been focusing a lot on on-site, uh, basically. What are the other um, yep. um, areas you're focusing on? Yeah, great question. So, we, so part of what we're announcing really today is the ability to personalize, not just on-site, but obviously within your app as well, and then doing fully personalized search, so personalized emails and newsletters. So the real idea is to say, it's crazy to have f four different you know, tools personalizing every one of these things. When you want to have a, a unique user experience, throughout all of every way they touch your site or app, you should have one engine that's powering all of that because you want to make sure it ha they have the same experience and a smart experience throughout. Could you elaborate a little bit more what you're doing exactly with the emails and newsletters? Yeah, so emails, think about it. Email to us is just another touch point, right? A user comes, they read your emails, we'll gather how they're reading the email, when they go to the site, what they're doing when they go to the site, and we're learning all those interactions as well. And then the moment that email is generated, they make an API call to Lipsigniter to have that new um, email, per personalized email sent to them with the right content in it or right items to buy in it. How do you do the cross-device identification? So that's a great question. It's actually really challenging to do a cross-device yeah. um, understanding. Yeah. The, the thing though, part of what makes our system pretty unique is because we're able to do it in real time, even if we don't know that you're the same person in email and on your mobile phone and on the website, because we're reacting so quickly, we can still make an intelligence determination about what is relevant for you at that moment in time. So you react based on my latest activity as opposed to based on my entire customer lifetime journey? Right, well, if, we have, if you logged in, we obviously then, can do yeah, it across. Yeah. So that's, that's great to do. But in many cases, you don't always have that logged in data. Yeah. So in which case, is that in, in immediate reaction, right? Is it cold today? That's right. the reaction, should I wear a hat? 
Should I'll I read this sweater. article? Yeah. Read about TechCrunch Disrupt Battlefield because yeah. that's interesting right now. And I have another question, if that's okay. Um, I think one of the things that your the tools you compete with and will compete with struggle with is the fact that they're very complex, mm -hmm. and actually you need very sophisticated market marketers to use them. And at some point, you run out of customers that have really sophisticated marketers. Are you going? How are you going to tackle that? And it, it's hard for me without looking at the product to understand how easy or not easy it is yeah. to use. But maybe you can talk about that a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. So, so we actually view ourselves as incredibly easy by comparison to use. Right? You do this one integration, and then it learns in real time, and it actually does all the work. So your total cost of ownership is extremely low from a time <laughs> perspective. Um, and then also on top of it, the ability for users to it, it just runs. You can make changes to the rules mm -hmm. that you want or the mm -hmm. different goals that you want to have. But compare that as an example to predictive analytics or analytics tools or A-B testing. That's a lot of work for marketing teams. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it's never specific enough, right? I could never create a segment that says, here are all the five judges, and I want to show them all separately different things. Like, that's impossible for a marketer to do and to change those fast enough. A machine learning system, on the other hand, can do that intelligently for every single one of you in an automated fashion and still achieve the goals the business requires. So how long does it take? Sorry. sorry, I think Francesca had one okay, question. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, where do you see the company ultimately? What's the yeah. big, big vision for this? Because it's quite small at the moment in terms of just optimizing websites, but where could it actually go? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I ran out of time, and I would have said at the end, basically, what we very much see is in the next five years, I sincerely believe that every single website and app is going to have a layer of personalization and machine learning built into it. Um, and obviously, our goal is to be that platform. In fact, I think you'd be crazy to build a website and app, even today, and not have machine learning and personalization built in, right? At TechCrunch, you guys create fantastic content, but yet it's not necessarily being targeted directly to each user, in which case it's sort of wasted. The eyeballs who care about that specific content aren't seeing it, which means you're not getting your full dollar value for the amount of effort you put in. Cool. And then, you know, basically your identity is being dragged from you every time you hit that website or from website to website or because if you have that level of personalization for one individual clearly you want to keep that identity so the next time they come back it's all there again right yeah you do although at the same time remember the key thing that people really think about is historical information you think would be really valuable and interesting but what's more relevant is what just like the question you asked me right now is more relevant than the question you asked me a few minutes ago I'm reacting to that right now, and that's the most important thing, as long as I can react quickly to it. And so that's really what we look at much more, and it's far more important and relevant for us to be successful for our customers and achieve the results that we achieve. All right, one more round of applause for Nilift Igniter. Thank that you. That was a great, great pitch. I appreciate Very it. Very well done.